let me point out the, the irony, the contradiction in this entire notion of a peace plan. Just a few days ago, if you'll remember, when there was the first talk of a ceasefire, Moscow even disputed that any ceasefire agreement had been reached. And their words were, how can we broker a deal if we are Russia, that is, not party to the conflict at all. Then the next thing we hear is that Vladimir Putin, while on a plane to Mongolia, scribbled down a seven-point peace plan on a napkin while on the plane. This peace plan now is what we're talking about, this seven-point plan scribbled on a napkin. Now, what does it do? Yes, it calls for both sides to cease their firing. Okay, that's good. Everyone wants the conflict to stop. Here's where the problems begin. It also calls for Ukrainian forces to withdraw their troops and their heavy artillery from all of the towns and cities uh, in which they are right now based. And the Russians say they are shelling these cities, and they are shelling the cities, uh, leaving the separatists in place. In other words, the separatists in place locking in their territorial gains, freezing them in Luhansk, in Donetsk, and now as we've been reporting, that new front, the third front in the southeast of Ukraine, around the town of Mariupol, near there, around the Sea of Azov. These are all gains that will stay in place. You might ask me, so why is Petro Poroshenko cautiously optimistic? The reason is he has no choice. Ukrainian military is a scrappy force. It needs to be modernized. He cannot match the fast modernizing Russian military and the heavy Russian forces, which are now by all accounts in Ukraine, backing up these separatists, actual Russian forces have vanquished the Ukrainians. They've suffered a string of defeats. You have Petro Poroshenko on the back foot. He has no choice but basically to negotiate for peace of any kind.